two years ago on January 29, 2020, I called a rideshare car to take me to the San Francisco airport. And right before I requested the car, I had this intuitive sense that I should wait, but I shrugged it off. When I got into the car, feeling uneasy, I started to meditate, and I uh, closed my eyes, and about 20 minutes later, I heard the driver gasp, and when I opened my eyes, I saw that we were driving at 70 miles per hour into a three-car pileup on the highway. My body flew in the air like a ping-pong ball as the car behind us smashed into us. I had known that something did not feel right before I got into my car. Ignoring my intuition that day almost cost me my life. Have you ever tossed and turned at night, unable to sleep, worrying whether you've actually made the right decision one way or another, second-guessing decisions that you've made? For much of my life, I used to make decisions based on fear and anxiety rather than inspiration and intuition. And I often felt completely disconnected from myself. And I look outside myself for answers. I look for my connection to self in my relationships, through validation at work, or through some big win or accomplishment. But what I was really looking for was a rock-solid connection to my inner voice. And it took me a decade of a lot of poor decisions and choices before I had a reckoning. In 2017, I finally hit a breaking point. On the outside, my life looked great. Yet I was privately suffering from many months of sleepless nights, worrying whether I made the right decision one way or another. And what I really wanted was a connection to myself. What I was really looking for was a rock-solid connection with my intuition. On the outside, my life looked great, yet I was privately struggling for many months of sleepless nights, lacking the motivation to continue working at my corporate job. I ultimately quit, walked out with no plan B, and many would say that is not a smart thing to do in San Francisco when you're living alone. But I knew I needed the, I needed the space to turn into my intuition, and it took me um, a lot of reckoning before I was able to, to find that. Um, so I'd like to share, and many of you might be asking, what is intuition? Well, there's a lot of definitions, but to me, it's the ability to sense insights and information as a direct knowing. Intuition is not a thought. Instead, it's a flash of insight without thinking, and it's often non-linear. Brenda Dunn, the former manager of the Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research Lab, who I recently had on my podcast, says, intuition is accessing information from the heart rather than the head. She says, when we allow the inner self to communicate with us, we can get some really valuable information. And after studying with the masters of intuition through courses and workshops and lectures, I decided to go all in and earned a master certification in intuition medicine at an 18-month program in California. Now, after I combined my intuition with my intellect, the course of my life changed forever. I went from managing one career to operating as if I cloned five versions of myself, creating multiple careers that allowed me to express my full self, from film to podcasting to becoming an author. A lot of people assume intuition is magic or complicated, but it's really simple, and we all have this gift. Every single one of you has the gift of intuition. So I'd like to share three big themes that worked for me. The first is to become present, the second is learning to receive, and the third is setting intention. So let's talk about becoming present. Many of us are completely disconnected from the present moment, and when we're not worrying about the past or the future, we're on a screen. I used to spend most of my days on a phone, on a laptop, or on some kind of screen watching a show or a movie. And, <laughs> you know, um, I often just felt completely disconnected from myself. And so I like to share a tool that really worked for me. I put my hand on my heart, I state my name, the date, and which city I'm in. It helps me orient myself in space and time. So I'd say, my name is Yasmin Terehi, it's March 5th, 2022, I'm in Santa Rosa at the Sonoma County Day School. Another tool I use to become more present is to ask, where is my awareness right now? So where is your awareness right now? The second theme is about receptivity. Many of us are clouded with other people's thoughts, what the media tells us, and our cultural conditioning. I used to be the kind of person who would ask eight people about a big life decision, only to end up so far off my path. 
and my awareness was often scattered. In order to be receptive and neutral, I learned to keep my awareness in the center of my head in order to access my subconscious. And from there, I would drop and make a connection to my heart. And from my heart, I'd expand my energy outwards, and I'd make a connection to all things. And that's when the insights usually happened. At first, I needed to wait for 30 minutes just to make a connection. If I didn't know where to start, I'd ask a question, and then I'd try to feel what made me feel heavy and contracted, what made me feel light and expanded. And the third piece is about setting intention. So while intuition is about listening, setting intention is about asking. How many of us are focused on our problems instead of being in a creative space of possibility? When I want to create something, I place my energy and attention on what I want to create, and I merge with it. I learned that energy follows thought, so I became a warrior at noticing my thoughts and redirecting them towards a life that I actually wanted. And if I didn't know what I wanted, I would focus on the feeling that I wanted instead. A few months after I walked out of my corporate job, I decided to create a fantastical film, something I knew absolutely nothing about, and I used my intuition to guide me through the process. I got present and receptive, I started to imagine a film crew in the desert, and even though it seemed so outlandish at the time, I synchronistically soon met my business partner. And, you know, setting intention and intuition takes practice. So when we needed to raise additional funds for the film, at first, I went the logical route. I called and emailed hundreds of people. And when that didn't work, I panicked. And then I remembered to use my intuition. I got present, receptive, made a connection, and had the insight to reach out to three specific people. And within one week, we got all the funding we needed to finish our film. So be present, receptive, and then make an intention. I believe that these are the skills we really need to learn right now. Intuition is the new productivity, and the use cases of intuition are endless, from small daily decisions to big life transitions, to accessing innovative ideas, intuition can be our guiding light throughout our lives. In just four years, intuition set me on a path of massive course correction, and I began to live a life filled with synchronicities and possibilities. And don't get me wrong, life is constantly testing me, and of course, I still make wrong decisions, just as I did four year, uh, two years ago when I got into that rideshare car but it's often because I forget to practice these principles. So what can you do today to lean into your intuition? Start small with less important decisions first. The next time you have to make a decision, get present, receptive, and then set an intention. I believe that we can make better and more aligned decisions in life and work so that we can create our lives rather than react to it and enjoy the time that we're here alive. Trust that you, have all the answers inside of you. And if you don't like the life you're living now, know that there are always infinite, infinite possibilities waiting for you. <laughs>